Once again, we're given an example of a side, side, and an angle. And so we could end up with an ambiguous case, one triangle, two triangles, no triangle. And so we need to sketch the triangle first and then see which situation we have. I'll first draw my angle of 53 degrees. We'll call that angle A. Then I'm going to draw B over here, angle B. I don't know what it is, but I know side B is 35. And I know side A, which is opposite angle A of 53 degrees, is 79 units long. And so I think I'm actually going to end up drawing my triangle just a little bit more short and squat with respect to B because I need this side to be realistic. I need the 79 to be at least sort of realistic. And that's going to mean I'm going to have to shorten this side B just a little bit. And then angle C, I don't know. Side C, I don't know. And once again, we have this scenario where we could have something changing. We could have this side A swing through and hit the other side, or we could have it be longer than B and only have one triangle. So let's find out how it re relates to the height. Just really quickly, we double have to double check that its height is smaller than A. So sine of 53 degrees equals H over 35. That means H is equal to 35 times sine of 53 degrees. So the height is 28 units, rounding to whole numbers, which means A is greater than H. We also do not have an ambiguous case because A is larger than B, and so we will only have one triangle. Go ahead and make a note of this. Since A is longer than H and longer than B, We have only one triangle. We know that there's only one triangle, and now all we have to do is find the unknown angles and sides. So the first thing I'll do is take sine of 53 degrees over 79 and set that equal to sine of B over 20 over 35. Now I'll clear my fractions by multiplying by the denominators.
and divide out the common factor. Now I have 35 sine of 53 degrees is equal to 79 sine of B. I'll now divide both sides by 79 because remember I'm trying to isolate the angle B that I don't know. Once I've divided out the common 79, I have 35 sine of 53 degrees all over 79 is equal to sine of B. Now remember if I want to find an angle, I take the inverse of both sides. So I'm going to take sine inverse of the left side and sine inverse of the right side. First I make sure my calculator is in degrees, and it is. Then I take sine inverse of 35 times sine of 53 degrees. And I'm going to make sure that this is all in the numerator by putting another set of parentheses divided by 79 and I get B is equal to 20.72. I'm just going to round that up to 21 degrees. Let's calculate angle C by remembering that A plus B plus C, the angles, all three of the angles, have to add up to 180. So I have 53 degrees for A plus 21 for B plus C equals 180 degrees. That means if I solve for C, I'll have 180 degrees minus 74 degrees. So that means C is equal to 106 degrees. Now that I know that angle C is 106 degrees, I can now find side C using the law of sines. Sine of 53 degrees over 79 is equal to sine of 106 degrees over C. And the same process goes on where I solve for C by clearing my fractions and isolating the variable I'm looking for. and I get C is equal to 95.086. I'm just going to round that to 95. So C is equal to 95 units in length. I've gone ahead and sketched something that I think is similar to a 55 degree angle. We're going to call this angle C and it's 55.3 degrees. I also have an opposite side of C, lowercase c, is 22.8 units long. We'll call the other side here, opposite the angle A, which we don't know, to be 24.9 units long. 
And we also don't know the angle B or the side opposite length. So I'm going to put a dotted line for the angle B and also for the side B. And now I need to find the height. I can find the height H by taking opposite over hypotenuse And then if I multiply both sides by the hypotenuse, which in this case is the 24.9 to both sides, I get h is equal to some number. Let's give it a try and see what we get. So the height is 20.47. I think I'm going to round this to one decimal place, so we'll call this 20.5. Notice that side C is greater than the height of the triangle, and that side C is less than A, which means we now have what is called an ambiguous case. which means we could have two different triangles. These two blue angles are equivalent, which means that if I wanted to find the angle on the smaller triangle over here, it would just be whatever this angle is subtracted from 180 because this whole distance here is 180 degrees. So we're going to call this angle A sub 1 and this angle over here angle A sub 2. And we'll call this first angle and then we can figure out that's B sub 1, and then we'll find B sub 2, which is going to be the smaller one. We'll also need to find base or side B, so we'll call the larger one B sub 1, and the smaller one B sub 2. That's just to keep track of where we're at in the process. And this does take quite a bit of calculation work. So again, we're going to work with B sub 1, the angle and B sub 1 the side first sine of 55.3 degrees over side C which is 22.8 and I will set that equal to angle A sine of angle A over side A which is 24.9 now I just need to solve for the angle A. And I'll take the inverse sine of both sides. And I'll get A is equal to the inverse sine of 24.9 times sine of 55 degrees, 55.3 degrees, all over 22.8. And I get 63.9. Now remember, this is my angle A sub 1, which is 63.9 degrees, which means if I want to find the other angle, I'll just take 180 minus the previous answer. And so A sub 2 would be 116.1 degrees. And 
And now I need to find side B and angle B sub 1. which is 60.8. All right, now we're going to find side B sub one. This uh, will be done by using law of sines again. So we'll have sine of 53 5.3 degrees over 22.8 is equal to sine of 60.8 degrees over B sub 1. The side B sub 1 will be 22.8 times sine of 60.8 degrees all divided by sine of 55.3 degrees. B sub 1 is 24.2 units long. And I have found all the angles and all the sides for the first triangle. Now we need to figure out the smaller triangle. I know that a sub 2, the angle, is going to be 116.1 degrees. I know that my angle C is still going to be 55.3 degrees. I know side A is going to be 24.9. And side C is going to be 22.8. So here I've re-sketched the smaller of the two triangles, the little wedge that I'm running out of room on my screen to keep on the same page, but I want you to just notice that B sub 2 is simply going to be 180 degrees minus 116.1 degrees minus 55.3 degrees, that will give me B sub 2. That's a whopping 8.6 degrees. And the only side I now need to find is B sub 2, which is going to be found using the law of sines. So we have sine of 50 5.3 degrees over 22.8 equals sine of 8.6 degrees over B sub 2. That means B sub 2 will be 22.8 times sine of 8.6 degrees all divided by sine of 55.3 degrees. Now, I am fully aware that I'm skipping a few steps to solve for B sub 2 because there's simply just not enough room to show all the steps here. But if you're struggling with this, I think you should just pause the video and go ahead and use your algebra skills and solve for B sub 2 and you'll see that this is what you come out with. So finally, B sub 2 is a very small number. It's 4.1, and there I have it. I have all my sides and all my angles, and I now can share with anyone that my ambiguous case had two solutions.